Hello world and welcome to another episode of Launch Math. In today's episode, I want to show you the new FIFO queues as an event source for Lambdas. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday. So let's get started. <laughs> Welcome to six episode on launch math. We are going to make one video every day of December until Christmas talking about all the amazing reinvent launches. We are in day six, so almost one third through it. So yay. <laughs> in this episode, I want to talk about a launch that was one of the pre reinvent launches, but I think it's pretty cool and it's something a lot of you have been asking for. We have the capability in SQS to have FIFO queues, but before we were not able to use those queues as an event source for our lambdas. Now we can, and I want to show you how it's done. If you don't know what a FIFO queue is, it's basically an order queue. You put events in and they come out in the same order. FIFO means first in, first out. It's a very Typical queue, very used, and it's great to keep things in order. Some applications require that your events are handled in order, and that is why a lot of people have been asking for this feature. So I hope you enjoy this video. I will show you a little bit on how this works, and then I will show you an example using SAM. You can find the code as always in GitHub. One important thing to understand that FIFO queues are similar to standard queues, but they have two different attributes more. The first is the message group ID, and that it allows to group the messages in like uh, in the single queue. So you can use uh, one message ID for all your events. You don't need to have multiple ones, but if you would like that those messages kind of belong together somehow you can use these uh, different IDs. And the other one is the message uh, deduplication ID and this is a token used to deduplicate messages within a five minute intervals. So if both uh, if a message which uh, arrives within that interval that look the same then one is delivered because we want to preserve the order. So now let's go to the slides and learn a little bit more about this and then go to the example. So let's look at this example. We have two message groups with three items each. Then we submit those items to a FIFO queue and the new items will trigger a lambda. That lambda has a batch size of 10 for consuming items for the message queue. So the consuming lambda function will get all the six items and all the items will be processed in one single batch with one function. But what happens if we have, I don't know, uh, many more messages than the Lambda can consume in one batch and we need to have concurrency enabled. So let's look at another example where we need to have the concurrency of the Lambdas. In this example, we have three message groups and a total of 53 messages. Group A consists of 18 messages, group B consists of 12 messages, and group C consists of 23 messages. We put all these messages in the queue, and then we have a lambda that uh, gets triggered by this queue. The batch size for the lambda is five messages, and we have 53 messages in total. So in order for lambda to process these messages, there is the uh, rules for processing. The first rule is that we want to return the oldest message where no other message with the same message group is in flight. Then we want to return as many messages with the same message group ID as possible. And finally, if a message batch is still not full, go back to the first rule. As a result, it's possible for a single batch to contain messages of multiple message groups ID. In this case, we have the FIFO uh, queue that receives those messages and then puts them in the different consumers. And here we have the consumer one is Lambda 1, Lambda 2, and Lambda 3. So Lambda 1 will receive five messages from uh, the C, uh, the one uh, C1 to C5. Then we'll receive another five messages from the batch two, 
from V1 to V5. And then messages from the group B are coming into the flight. Now we start scaling up the lambdas. The lambda number two will start up and then you will get the messages from the C6 to C10. That is again the batch uh, two. And then the consumer free will also kick off and we will receive all the messages from the A group in there. Each lambda will uh, receive messages uh, in groups of five until the queue is empty. And the lambda will scale horizontally to consume the messages in the queue. And if they will try to consume the messages as quick as possible and as efficient as possible, maximizing the, maximizing the concurrency. And, and then as the traffic flux trace, the lambda will scale up and down depending on the messages that are in flight. So let's go to the code and see this in action on how we can configure our queue. So I have already an application that I have configured this for you. We have a simple application with an API gateway, one function that gets triggered with that API gateway, and then send messages to a queue, and then another function that gets triggered with the messages of that queue. This function will get a batch size of one, but you can define the size of the batch. So the function that gets triggered with the API gateway and put the messages in the batch, it needs to have access to be able to put messages in the queue. So that's super important. So don't forget this policy. And also we need to send the queue name to know in which queue the messages should be put. I'm also defining the queue in my uh, serverless um, application. And here you can see that my queue name is .fifo and it fifo queue and the content based duplication is true. These are three things that you need to have in order to have a fifo queue. So this is important for the configuration of your queue. So let's go to the handler code of the hello function that is doing some magic here and we can see what is going on. The first thing that we are doing is uh, using the SQS library and then we are getting the queue name from the environmental variables. And then we have the method hello that will put a message into the queue. We need to send a group ID and a message ID to that queue, to that, uh, yeah, to that queue. And here is we, we, how we create the message. We have the message group that is group of the group ID, then the message duplication ID, the message body, and the queue URL that we get from the environmental variables. And when we have that, then we shall send this message to this queue. Then this queue will get triggered because we have the event configuration here that is type SQS and from the queue that we just put the message into and the batch size of one. In this case, it will process one uh, element at a time. So it's a very simple queue. And I recommend you that if you are using this in production that you put this uh, batch size up. So you're not executing the Lambda all the time. The queue uh, code is extremely simple. It's just printing the event in the console. So. We can see this in action from Postman. I will deploy this. And we can try it out. Now that everything is created for us, we can go and open this endpoint in Postman. And we can go to the Lambda page, to the applications, monitoring and here we will see the monitoring for this call. This should invoke the two functions. When one is invoked, the other one should be invoked from the queue. So here we can see we have two invocations, one from the hello function, one from the queue. And here you can see all the different information. So we put a message in the queue and that trigger a lambda. The code is available in GitHub as always. 
that was the video for today i hope you like it if you like it give a big thumbs up and this is only the sixth episode of launch month so tomorrow more videos are coming and i hope you're enjoying this as much as i am and if you have anything of the launches that you would like to see let me know in the comment box by the time this video is out most of the rain band launches should be out already all of them so i'm really excited to know which are your best launches your favorite launches or the ones that you want to know more about so i see you tomorrow with another episode of Fubar. ciao ciao